myself and my dad with Simple Suburban Living and we're down here in the aquaponics garden uh, here in the basement and I just thought today that I'd go through a few system design kind of tips and tricks and just things that I've learned um, over the about six months since I've built this system and been running it here. So um, there's a lot of things that I've learned from trial and error and experimentation and just some of the system setup and design that I would have like to have done a little bit differently with this system and some things that I may be changing and adding here in the, in the next few weeks. So. I'm um, just going to go through with you seven or eight different things that I've kind of um, identified as uh, um, things that I wish that I would have done a little bit differently. And so hopefully this will help you out whether you're starting a new aquaponic system or uh, have one set up and you're just looking to improve it at, um, uh, in any way. So uh, I'll go through and uh, show you what I've learned. All right. So one of the first things I want to talk to, to uh, you guys about is uh, the type of rock. And for those of you who have been following the system, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, so the first the first and most important thing is to test the rock that you're going to put in here whether you're using uh, baked clay um, or whether you're going to use some type of uh, river rock or uh, um, slate or um, uh, whatever other type of rock you want to use um, lava rock i see a lot of people using things like that make sure you test it um, throw it in a, in a bowl put some vinegar in there and just see if you get a lot of reaction um, a, a very very small reaction over about 20 minutes if you see a couple bubbles forming, that's fine. Um, but if you see that rock fizzle away and start fizzing, and you'll see different rocks do different things, but uh, that means you'll end up with a pH problem, which is kind of what we're ha what we have here. So um, that's one of the most important things that I wish I would have done more testing on the rock. I did test the rock before I put it in here, but I tested just a few pieces of it. I grabbed like three or four pieces of the rock, um, threw them in, and tested it, and they did fine. To come to turn out, there is some limestone in here. There are some fossilized shells and other things in here that are causing the pH to bounce up to 8.2 no matter what I do. So I'm going to be slowly changing this rock out. And I think I found a few solutions um, for that that I'll talk about more in the next uh, episode. But So that's one of the, the biggest recommendations I can give is um, testing the rock. I'm still getting pretty good growth here, but uh, um, uh, it would be a lot better. Things would be growing a lot better if, uh, if the pH was lower. So um, that's the biggest thing. The next thing, um, when I filled all these beds up and when you're trying to adjust your bell siphons, I wish that I would have uh, filled these, uh, adjusted my, my uh, level of the water to fill just a a little bit lower in the system and if you can see here what's happening is a lot of the light is penetrating through the rock here where the water level comes up and I'm getting a lot of algae growth um, within the within the rock itself and so if I either add more rock to the top of this which is what I'll probably do in this case since I can't get down to my um, fill pipe to lower the level of it um, that would be one of the things. So make sure that your, your water fill level comes up to about an inch and a half to two inches below your rock. You can always dig down a little bit further with your plants, but you don't want that algae form in here. I've ended up getting some fruit flies and stuff like that that are, that are uh, you know, coming in and eating algae and organic matter and stuff like that that's sitting right at the top here. So um, definitely something that I would recommend. Make sure you have that water level well below the surface of the rock. All right, so one of the things that I really wish that I would have done a little bit differently when I was laying the system out and putting things together, um, this is my sump tank right here, and I've got this sitting vertically. It's just a standard 55-gallon drum with the top cut off, and then I've got a bulkhead adapter coming in the side here where all of my, this is my two-inch drain pipe, where all the, the grow beds drain into and feed back to the sump tank. Um, since the sump tank has to be the lowest point in this system, it's a single pump system, so uh, I would have liked to have laid the, the sump tank down horizontally it would have been able to get the water level a lot lower probably about a foot and a half lower and that would have allowed me to lower these grow beds down a little bit as well so it would have given me more grow space since i'm working in a basement here i only have so much space between the grow bed and the ceiling so it would have gave me more space for taller plants um, it also would have allowed me a little easier access to the grow beds working with them planting and things like that um, also these bulkhead adapters aren't cheap, so the ones that I bought here were about, I think, 10 bucks a piece. Um, I may have gotten them a little bit cheaper than that the second time I bought them, but they're still very expensive. So um, if you keep the lid on your barrel, a two-inch male threaded adapter will actually thread right in. And so you can actually keep the, the lid right on the barrel, and I could have just fed my um, drain pipe right into that, right at the end. So it would have saved me a bulkhead adapter. I could have just cut a a hole in the top of the barrel to feet to put the pump in and out of um, and that would allow me to lower the system down a little bit so that might be something that I change down the road um, right now it is working fine but uh, if I want to lower the beds a little bit and uh, um, give me a little bit more space up top 
can lower that sump tank down. If we're working in a greenhouse or something like that, a lot of people, what they do is they bury the sump tank in the ground. And that, uh, again, you want that to be the lowest point in the system, so that allows you to keep your grow beds really low. So definitely something that I would have changed and may change down the road. So right now I've been topping our system off and filled the system up initially with our well water here. Um, the well water that we have here, it is very, what, what's considered hard water. So it has a lot of minerals in it. It's got a lot of rust in it and iron. Um, as you can see from this quarter inch line here that used to be clear, it's now kind of red because it's been stained by all the, the rust and iron in the water here. Um, but the, the automatic top-off system is awesome, and the only thing that I will change is that instead of hooking this, this quarter-inch water line directly into our well water, I actually have a filtration system here in the house that we're not currently using. It's a real nice fil filter, a filtration system that I'm going to hook this up to, so it'll top the system off with, with a more pure water. That's one of the things I wish I would have done originally, especially when you're starting the system off, and there's a lot of variables. You know, you want your pH to be right, you want your hardness to be right, you want um, all the different uh, minerals and things like that to be correct in your system. So um, if you put pure water in it in the first place or filtered water, you just have less variables to deal with and you can control all those, uh, all the things that are in the system a lot better. So that's one thing I wish I would have done differently and I would highly recommend if you're starting a new system off to uh, avoid using uh, well water. Um, the uh, one of, the, one of the things that is kind of an alternate solution that I'm doing right now is I do have a dehumidifier here in the basement that I've just kind of hooked up near the system. We run this all the time in the summer anyway to take some of the humidity out of the air in our basement. And normally this just drains into our sump pump and just gets pumped out into the yard. So instead of wasting that water, I'm just filter, pumping it right into our system here, draining it right into the system to top it off. Um, that humidif you know, The dehumidifier just takes the water right out of the air, and so that's... Uh, it doesn't have all the minerals and things in it that our well water does. So um, that's one idea that you could use as well to top off the system is some type of dehumidif uh, dehumidifier as well. Um, but uh, in the future, uh, in a future video, I'll probably go over how I will be filtering the water, what type of filter I'm using, and uh, how I'm kind of um, topping the system off differently. All right, so one of the, the things that I thought I would like a lot about this system was the way I designed it up against the wall it really makes this quite a sturdy system. It's, I, I was worried that with all the weight of the water in here that it was gonna be wobbly and stuff. So that's why I put this system up against the wall. I also was kind of trying to figure out a way to route the pipes and things like that where they'd be out of the way. Um, now that I've been working with the system for six months, I really would have appreciated the system kind of being out in the center. So I would have had access to both sides of these grow beds. Um, you know, it's not too bad and I can easily reach the back However, you really have to be careful of how you're planting things. If you're going to put something up against the wall like this, um, these beds are, I don't know, about three feet deep, I think, maybe a little bit more. And uh, you have to plant your taller plants in the back of the system and keep all your short stuff towards the front. Uh, like this green pepper plant that I have here, and I have some tomatoes in the middle, and I had some shorter stuff in the back. It makes it really hard to get through and access any of those things. So if you're trying to harvest fruit or you know beans or whatever, uh, I've got oregano in the back over there I have to get to. It, it makes it difficult. I actually have to get a stool and really reach in there and try not to damage the other plants. So that's one thing I would, I would recommend. If you can put your system where it has access to both sides, that's awesome. It makes it a lot easier to work in. Um, also planting things so that you have the taller plants that are going to be in the back and the shorter ones in the front. That makes a huge difference with your day-to-day -day kind of maintenance of the system. Uh, makes things a lot easier. All right, so one of the things that I had to really try to figure out at the beginning here when I was setting the system up was how many fish do I need? How many pounds of fish? Um, I'm using goldfish right now for the first um, probably the first year of the system here as I get everything just really dialed in so that I can really start to produce for some food for our family here out of this system. Um, but I wanted to figure out what, how many fish to get. Uh, we decided to get a bunch of feeder fish and they ended up giving us a hundred of them. Uh, they were very tiny when we bought them and I knew that they would grow but I wasn't quite sure how much and how fast. Now we did lose about 25 fish. Uh, feeder fish, most of them were sick and things like that obviously and then the uh, initial setup of the system, the conditions probably weren't very very good for the fish uh, to start with. So we did lose about 25, so we have about 75 in here, maybe 78 I think, um, of fish left. It's, it's working just fine, there's plenty of ammonia in the system and uh, the system is able to keep up with it, but it does end up uh, requiring that you have a swirl filter or something to take a lot of the solids out. Um, it's hard to judge feeding with this many fish, there's a lot of extra food that gets uh, wasted and, and 
transported through the system and also uh, a lot of fish waste and a lot of that will get uh, taken into the grow beds and end up mucking things up probably quicker, quicker um, with this many fish. So I may have started off with maybe 25 goldfish. They will grow uh, quite large quite fast and if you feed them more they'll grow quicker. So that's one thing that I probably would have done a little bit differently is just started with less fish. You can always add more if you need to. So um, I would say if you're going to have a system about this size start with about 25. All right, so one of the last things that I thought I would mention um, is a swirl filter, and that's actually something that I hope to have finished by our next update, which will be next week. So if you're interested in, in that system and, and how swirl filters work, how to build a simple one, um, and kind of the installation here, check that video out. Um, subscribe to the channel, and we'll have that posted up uh, hopefully by next week. I'm, I'm hoping to have that finished. But the reason I mention that is because you do end up, no matter how efficient your system is, no matter how many fish you have, you're going to end up getting some solid waste that's going to end up transported through your water system and it's going to end up in your grow beds. A perfect example of that is this bed. I have never, I, I found out my rock was, was not uh, pH neutral before I had filled this one and so I never filled it until I figure out a final solution for my grow media. And I've been using this as a swirl filter. Basically, I just let this last valve run at a slow pace. Most of the solids kind of transport to the end of the system here. And I open that up and dump it in here every once in a while. But as you can see, you know, all the brown here is just a layer of solid waste. Uh, fish food, uneaten fish food, and fish uh, feces, obviously, that end up in here. So that all will end up in your grow beds and i'm sure there's also a lot in the grow beds as well that didn't make it down to this so that's one thing that i really uh, wish i would have put a swirl filter in at the very beginning of the system to filter out any solid waste it just makes the system run a lot longer without you needing to clean it um, probably years before you need to you know clean out your grow media at all if you have a good swirl filter so that's definitely something that i would uh, would highly recommend that you install right away all right, well, hopefully that gave you a few ideas of some uh, things to, to not do and some things to do if you're setting up a new system or um, if you have an aquaponics uh, system that you've just set up or you're looking to uh, maybe improve a little bit, hopefully you got a few ideas from my system. I know when I set this system up, I did a lot of research and watched a lot of YouTube videos and checked a lot of other people's systems out uh, to get the ideas uh, on how I wanted to design mine. So, um, but basically, you know, uh, lowering the sump tank, uh, getting good grow media to put in here, uh, making sure that you have the proper water levels, uh, the quality of water that you're putting into the system, adding a swirl filter in to remove any solids. Um, those are all some of the kind of the main key things that I that I wish I would have done differently. Uh, I planting the plants, you know, I wish I would have kind of thought a little bit more about that when I planted things, and I'm doing a lot of rearranging and replanting now. Uh, to move things out of the way so I can get to everything. Having the system out away from the wall so I can get to both sides would be would be a, a big help as well. And uh, lowering the sump tank would have been nice as well so I could get these grow beds just down a little bit lower. Um, all those things kind of factor in and a lot of those things I'm going to be working on over the next uh, month or two and uh, getting the rock replaced and moving some plants around and really getting this system in gear so that I can produce quite a bit of food this summer. Uh, we're going to be trying to grow different things in here than we're going to be growing outdoors and a lot of things we're going to try to keep running year round in here. So, uh, But if you're looking to get into aquaponics, it's an excellent, uh, excellent sustainable project to do. Um, it's very easy. Uh, you don't have to build a system this big. You can start real small. You can go bigger than this. Uh, it, you know, it's scalable to however you want to do it. Uh, eventually, we'll have fish that we can harvest out of the system. We're going to put some perch in the system, so we'll have, you know, hopefully at least once or twice a year, we'll be able to harvest some fish. Uh, we'll always have vegetables growing in here year round, and uh, maybe even some fruit as well. So. Aquaponics overall has been awesome. It's exciting. It's a lot of fun to come down here and and, uh, and watch the things grow and uh, just from fish waste and uh, it's really cool. So if you're looking to get into it and have any questions, please let me know. Uh, if you have comments or suggestions or things that you've tried that have worked that I didn't mention, please throw them in the comment section. Start a discussion about it. Um, I'd love to see that. So thumbs up on the video, please, if you liked it or uh, found it informational at all. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're looking to uh, follow along here. We do a video every week, just about at least a very minimum every two weeks, uh, an aquaponics walkthrough and uh, kind of update on the system and as we're adding and changing things. So thank you for watching. Have a good one.